Good morning, guys. <laughs> Welcome to the vlog. I figured it is about dang time that I tell you guys about how I became an SLP or a clinical fellow SLP. How the heck did I get here? So that's what I'm going to do today. It's Thursday. I clearly just threw back a protein shake. When you drink protein every day and you drink the same brand and flavor of protein every day, you just have to, you just have to down it like that. It's just kind of the rules. Um, so I figured I would take you on how I got here. I am going to not just sit here and sit at the same spot and talk for like 15 minutes. Cause I feel like that's super boring. So I'm going to change the scenery every time I talk a little bit about how I got here. I got to go to work cause it's like 7 15. So let me, let me get ready for work so I can go and then I'll update you. So hey Ollie, come here. Come here, Ollie. This is Ollie. Hi, Ollie. Hi. Um, it all started, oh gosh, okay. <laughs> I started my speech pathology career in undergrad. So I knew going into undergrad that I wanted to do SLP. Um, my first two years of undergrad were more just like gen eds. And then the last two years were more of our major, were all of our major classes. I started doing undergraduate research in a medical based research lab that focused with ALS patients, Parkinson's patients, and also, um, cardiothoracic surgery patients. So that was like my big first, like outside class experience to adult med world. Um, I completed my undergraduate thesis in cardiothoracic patients on the utility of the three ounce water swallow screen. And that was probably one of the biggest like undertakings that I did at that like state of my education, because I was able to not only start a research study, but write a whole paper about it and do a whole lit review process and really learn and appreciate research and how important research is for our field. Um, so those like few years working as an undergraduate research assistant were huge in just developing an outside skill set into the med the medical speech pathology world. Um, I am forever thankful for that experience, those mentors, the things that I learned, the skills I developed. I was learning how to analyze swallow studies and learn digest and hyoid tracking and swallow tracking or timings of like swallow timing. Um, and then I also was able to do a little bit more of like cough work and learning uh, speech intelligibility because of our ALS studies had a lot of comparing dysphagia and speech. So that was undergrad. It was awesome. I, like I said, am forever thankful for that research lab and all the individuals that mentored me through that experience because it was just a huge stepping stone into starting me getting those outside experiences for adult um, medical stuff, which is very hard to get, especially when you are an undergrad and you are just trying to get experience. So that's how I started it. So I started applying for grad school during like Thanksgiving, Christmas time of my senior year. At that point, I already had asked for my letters of recommendation. I asked for them very early on. And that is like my biggest piece of advice for grad school applications is get to know your professors early on. So you're not asking just professors you had that last semester, build relationships and get to know your faculty. I asked a couple of professors and then also individuals that I worked with, with my research lab, my mentors. Um, the application process pretty much involved letters of recommendation an application to each university and then an application submission on SIDCAST, which is just the specialty of speech pathology applications. If you know, you know. Um, and then those involved a personal statement, your resume, and your transcripts. I started hearing back from the graduate programs mid to end of that spring semester. I applied to a total of four universities and I was lucky enough to get an acceptance to all four and I was basically wheeled it down to my top two 
to stay at the University of Florida and go to graduate school there or travel up to Boston and go to Massachusetts General Hospital. So it was basically through a top 10 public university or go to an Ivy League school affiliated with Harvard. I had a lot of big conversations and hard decisions to play, but I ended up staying at the University of Florida and I don't regret one minute of it. It has been the most wonderful graduate experience and I'm excited to talk more about the process and the eliminations of why I chose to stay at my school versus going to some fancy Ivy League school in a future vlog. Um, but UF has been absolutely amazing and kind of went down to the fact of like, I already had a community here. I already love this university. It is a wonderful university. The clinical experience here for adult medical world for me just aligned with everything I needed, I wanted and desired. It also, the finances of going to an Ivy League school and paying over four times versus staying in a state school and saving more money and making the same amount of salary when I graduated. Um, and I think the decision process of deciding where you're going to go to grad school is very personal and very person specific of what you want in your goals for your career. And I would really encourage individuals to start establishing those goals while you're applying to grad school and thinking about where you're going because each school is going to be designed very differently. And I love the layout of UF. I loved how they did classes and clinic intertwined. I love the diversity of clinical opportunity. And I also just had such a passion for the staff already and the connections I already had there. So it kind of was a no brainer for me to stay, even though that meant turning down my app absolute dream school. Go Gators always though. <sighs> I'm back from work. Okay. So I, well, I wish I was in my bed right now, but I still have my scrubs on and I need a shower, but I got into grad school clearly. Um, and how grad school worked for me is our program was set up that we did classes during the same time that we did. Oh my gosh, that we did, um, our rotations. So every semester I would have three classes and then I would go to rotations and our rotations would increase in the amount of time that we'd spend at each of them. So my first semester I did a school rotation and I was only in clinic for about like 10 to 12 hours a week. And then the next semester was my first adult placement. I absolutely adored that placement. I was at the hospital where I'm at right now working, but I worked with outpatient head and neck cancer um, and that was about 15 to 20 hours a week and then um, during the summer semester I was at an outpatient clinic that our health uh, system has that specializes in neuromuscular or, or um, neurodegenerate and neuromuscular diseases and disorders oh movement movement disorders sorry um, and so I was in that semester, that placement the whole summer, even though our summer classes were split up into A and B. Um, and in the summer, we only took one class each semester because they were like accelerated fast, fast classes. Um, at that place, I did a lot of outpatient swallow studies and also, oh no. Sorry, my battery just died. Um, so that placement I did outpatient swallow studies and then motor speech. So it was basically a combo of half a day in the morning. We do a lot of motor speech evals and then the afternoon was full of swallow studies. Um, so I got a great experience working with like ALS, Parkinson's, the typicals of like, um, PSP, myotonic dystrophy. Um, it was a really cool placement and it was the, that place itself, um, the facility has all the doctors and PT, OT, speech, the dietitian. like it's a one-stop shop for care. So that was a really, really unique placement for me, especially with my history of working as a research assistant with that patient population. I absolutely love that placement. Um, and then came my fall semester and I was at a skilled nursing facility. Um, that fall semester rocked my world for grad school because we also took our oral comps that semester. Um, some grad programs have a thesis requirement, but ours has an option to do either or. Majority of people just do the oral comps. So you meet with each professor and they ask you questions about one of the like big nine topics of speech pathology. And so you answer orally and talk to them about it for a couple minutes. So I did the rotation at the skilled nursing facility, 
went through all three grad classes and then also had oral comps to study for. Um, the skilled nursing facility was a lot of dysphagia management, um, cognitive therapy, and language therapy. I think most of my patients there were cognitive therapy, I would say, or dysphagia therapy. Um, and then I ended up taking my praxis right up before either winter break or around Thanksgiving. Um, so at that semester, I was also studying for the praxis because a lot of the information I needed for the praxis applied to my oral comps. So I took the praxis, I passed, um, and then I enjoyed winter break and just chilled. And then our last spring semester was the full-time externship or internship. Um, so I worked from like 40 to 50 hours a week for free at the hospital. Um, I was partnered with one clinician and we worked mainly in the medical ICU and the burn ICU. Um, we did both fees, MBS, clinical swallow evals, a lot of PMV and trach management, and then uh, here and there of language evals or cognitive evals, but a lot of PMV, trach management, and dysphagia was our like heavy caseload, and I absolutely loved it. And I started applying for jobs like halfway through that semester um, and had wonderful interview experiences. And my supervisor was so encouraging for me to take all the interviews that I got. Um, but I kept interviewing and kept looking for the job that I already had. And so me and her talked a lot about me applying for the position and I applied and interviewed and they offered me the position. So there wasn't actually a clinical fellowship at the hospital, but they made an exception for me, um, and took me on board, which worked out really well when I was thinking about starting as a new clinician. And it eliminated knowing the hospital, knowing the staff and knowing my supervisor, it eliminated a lot of like initial fears of work, starting work as a new clinician and just knowing a lot of the foundation. Um, so I was very happy and thankful for that experience. The interview process was something else. Applying for jobs was something else. Oh my gosh. I will talk all about applying for your clinical fellowship and what that was like and interviewing and tips for interviews and things I wish I did differently um, and things I enjoyed doing. But yeah, so then I took the job. I ended up taking about six weeks off after I graduated and a couple extra weeks because it took a good bit for your provisional license to come in. So take that into account. Um, and then once the provisional license came in, that's a license that you get as a clinical fellow and that your clinical fellow supervisor is like saying that she's also working with you. Um, and then that came in and then I started work and here I am, a working gal. Alrighty, I am about to head out. That was like the most condensed version of how I got to being an SLP possible, but I figured that sometimes condensed is great and I can go into more detail later on it. Um, but that was that. I will see you guys later next time I film. Thanks for watching.